So this is new. Hi everybody, welcome back to Winging It. My name's Rebecca and it's been quite a long time since I've done a piece of camera at the beginning of a video and so many people have joined us along the way over the last little while that I thought it was high time that I introduced myself again and maybe started talking to you a bit more directly again. So here I am. Thank you so much for tuning in again. If you're new here, you are so very welcome. And if you've been around for a while, thanks so much for sticking with me and tuning in again this week for a new project. So we're in week one of our March panel. In Winging It this year, we are gonna work on one piece throughout each month, building it up week by week until we've got something quite lovely and we're going to use our project as a little bit of a journal of our year and to reflect the changing seasons in the world wherever we live. So I live in rural Lincolnshire in the UK and so we are just starting to come into spring having gone through a very very wet and cold winter. So we Finished our January panel and mine looked like this. And we've done our February panel, which looked like this. And if you haven't seen any of those videos, I will link a playlist up here at the top of the screen so that you can go and watch those back and see how we arrived at those pieces of stitch. So we're about to embark on our March project and normally I spend quite a lot of time during the previous month thinking about the month ahead and coming up with a bit of an idea of where we're going to go. Now the project is called Winging It. I don't plan a great deal but I do have a germ of an idea normally when I sit down to film but today I really didn't know where it was going to go so I had a colour scheme in mind but really had no idea what was going to happen and it has taken a little bit of trial and error to be honest so I've had a couple of false starts with this one but I think I've landed somewhere that we're going to enjoy. So it's going to look a little bit like I've lost my mind in the first part of this video, <laughs> but please bear with me because I think we're heading to something really quite lovely. So today we're going to build our background just like we have done in the previous two panels. And we're going to add some textual stitch to um, sort of tone down the wildness of it. So I'm taking inspiration from what's happening in the world where I live. Do feel free to adapt this for the environment where you live, particularly if you live in the Southern Hemisphere and you are moving into autumn where we're moving into spring. So I hope you enjoy it. Gather all your bits and pieces and let's get stitching. So here we are again with our first March video and I have to be honest, February has been quite a chaotic month for me and I am starting this piece without any kind of clear <laughs> vision in my mind. So what we're going to do is start with the colour scheme. I've got a couple of ideas that I'd like to try but this is going to be just about as winging it as we can possibly imagine. So. Here's our colour scheme, you might have seen me post on Facebook on the community tab. So we've got some purples and yellows, I've put a tiny bit of pink in there and this sort of dark leafy green and I don't actually have a huge amount of fabric in these colours as it turns out. You might get a better sense of our colour scheme from my threads box. So our fundamental colours are purple, a leaf green colour, yellow, lilac and a sort of white pale grey or super pale lilac. So just off white really and I've taken this colour scheme from crocuses which I've been seeing a lot 
around and you could probably also get some daffodils in there but basically spring flowers are where this colour scheme has come from so I hope you like this if you are coming into autumn then have a look at what you can see in your local environment what flowers are out what shades are the leaves turning and see if you can pull together a colour palette that reflects March wherever in the world you live this is definitely what's going on in Lincolnshire at the moment I particularly wanted to get some white in there because there's loads of hawthorn blossom out at the moment and we have a pear tree in our village that doesn't really belong to anybody and it is in blossom with the most beautiful white spray so maybe we can get some of that in as well so that's where we're up to right because I didn't have very much in this colourway I thought we would go fully experimental <laughs> so I've set up my backing fabric I've got my wadding underneath and I've put a piece of my sheet over the top just to balance it out and we are going to go a little bit wild with this today so I'm actually going to keep that to one side for a minute and bring in my props so like we've done previously we are going to paint a background we did this in January you'll have to excuse me I am covered in ink already because that's what we're going to use so I got given a glass calligraphy pen as a gift and it came with a bunch of inks and they are metallic now I don't know how much of that metallic um, I guess it's like mica powder in there I don't know how much of that will transfer onto the fabric if it does then great and if not then no big deal so I've got a bit of purple it's like crocus purple and I've got a bit of a sort of grass green oh there we go <laughs> we've started apparently um, that's just dripped out of the lid and I've got purple everywhere as well and so what we're going to do I've also got a watercolour pen here there is some gold I don't know whether that will stay on the fabric so we can just make some marks with that as well I'm going to be fairly haphazard with this I just want to add some green to the background so let's start with this we can add a bit of water shortly to maybe spread this out these are quite old You could use watercolours. I did try it with acrylics, I might show you my acrylic version, but I found that when I came to stitch it, it was just too hard to get a needle through, and I discovered I wasn't really enjoying the process, so I've abandoned it. So just dabbing some. watercolour pen on just as a starting point now I'm doing this largely because I didn't have very much green fabric so I will add in some of the bits that I have got I've got some green felt but not much in the way of green fabric so now I'm just going to um, dip my brush in the ink and just make some marks. It's quite blue green. I might have to might have to explore the other greens in the set. I do predominantly want green for my background. So again, like we did in January you can just make some marks this is spreading quite far quite like that sort of watercolory green and then we can maybe dab some purple 
I want this to be quite dark in the end, so I'm just putting little splots. of purple around just going to have a look at I've got another green in here I wonder whether that one's going to be oh a mess. I do not like messy work. If you've been watching for a while you'll know I do not like messy work. This isn't, oh this is a very sort of grassy green. Let's get some dabs of that in. Okay, I'm happy enough with that. So that needs to dry and we shall see what happens. Okay, so we're pretty much dry. I've just gone over with a little touch of alcohol marker. I kind of I had a chisel tip and I've kind of streaked it up because I I was finding it a little bit too yellow and I wanted to tone it down but I also wanted to get some sort of vertical movement going in there so that's where we're up to so pretty much dry and I do have I don't know whether the camera will pick it up a little bit of the gold glitter in there just every now and again and I am going to have stained fingers for the rest of this video because I have scrubbed with a <laughs> nail brush and it's not coming off today so that's where we're up to so what I'm going to do next is create a little bit of a grid so I'm breaking up the space basically into five centimeter squares so each one of these is going to be stitched and I'm not going to show you every single bit of this process because we could be here all day. So I'm going to, I've got my variegated green here and this is going to tone it down so this is a lot earthier than the shades on the background but I'm just, just trying to use what I've got and I'm going to take two strands I'm hoping this is going to be really nice to stitch I did say I was going to show you what I'd done before so here's my first version it's a lot darker um, I painted with acrylic paint using all sorts of different ways of making marks and then I cut up the fabric into squares and rearranged it and I started stitching it down I did tack it with a diagonal you might be able to just about see some diagonal tacking stitches and it was so hard to stitch through that I ran it through my machine and just put in these irregular vertical lines but I still found it just really difficult to stitch through so I will use this at some point but not for this project because it just I think it looks really effective but it's just not nice to hand stitch so if you want to have a go at that feel free but um, I just was not enjoying stitching it so I've abandoned that one I do wing it <laughs> sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so I wanted something that was going to keep our fabric a lot softer I'm not going to stitch in every single square but we're going to stitch and actually what I'm going to eventually do I've got a disappearing marker here 
we're going to try and put a swathe of spring flowers that goes diagonally. That's kind of where I'm heading. So I want to stitch in these four maybe and these four and that probably will be enough. So let's start top left just because why not and I'm just going to use my grid as a guide and I think I'm going to start with just some simple running stitch. We did this last month so this is a way we can tie our panels together and I'm just going to stitch lines of running stitch across that square in my grid. So I've gone along and then I'm going to jump across, actually I'm not going to go that far, and then I'm going to come back in the opposite direction and I'm going to try and marry up the stitches but I'm not going to agonise over it if they don't line up exactly. This is so much nicer to stitch than the last one. It was awful because acrylic paint is plastic and so it forms a sort of plasticised layer on your fabric. So it's really tough and I'd applied it quite thickly. I think in hindsight I should have watered it down a little bit and it would have made the colours a little bit lighter as well but it just kind of plastic coated it was like sewing through oil cloth and that is not fun for hand sewing at all so yeah you live and learn I will find a way of using that panel but it wasn't for this I didn't think he'd thank me for making you <laughs> sew through plastic. No fun. So this is so much nicer because it's just soft cotton. It's my sheet that is worn through in the middle so it's well worn and well washed, it's gone really soft over the years and so we've got just a lovely texture to sew through actually the thing that gives the most resistance is the batting that I'm using because the sheet gives no resistance at all really So you get the idea, I'm going to finish off that block and then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do in my next block. Okay, so there's my first area with my straight stitch. So I'm going to go on to my next section and this one I'm, I'm going to use seed stitch. So we did this last week. Um, if you didn't see that video though, I will show you what I'm doing. So this is just running stitch but worked in random directions. So we're just going to make a load of running stitches but we're going to make sure our stitches are random. So they just are worked 
haphazardly. I'm trying really hard not to have two stitches heading in the same direction. And one of the ways I talked about last week that can help you keep it random is when you make a stitch you come up halfway along that stitch and work back into a space that you've left behind. So if you're not heading into, if you're heading into open space, so this stitch I'm heading into open space, I'm going to come up halfway back along it and I'm going to work back into a space that I've left behind. So I've got a stitch there that's got nothing halfway along it and I've got a stitch there that's got nothing halfway along it and I want to just work back in a direction where there's a gap. So if your threads come separate from each other, like mine have, sometimes you can just pull it. But take your needle down to the surface of the fabric, put your finger on it next to the eye and just pull your thread back along and that will line them back up. So another way to keep it random is to rotate your work at regular intervals. So you can see I'm working in a different direction now and you will tend to favour particular angles. And if you rotate your work, that evens that out and means that you will be working in, you'll still be favouring the same angles, but they'll be going at 90 degrees to what they would have been going before. So just keeping your work rotating is another strategy for keeping everything random. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing with this. So I'm going to fill this little square on my background with these stitches and then we'll come back and do another square. Okay, so here's my seed stitch section and hopefully you can see already how much that thread is toning down our background so we can still see it emerging through but it's a much earthier green and it's just bringing down the sort of vividness of that background fabric so I'm quite liking that I'm also noticing how the purple is sort of separating out its blue. <laughs> so it's more pinky red in the middle now and there's a sort of layer of blue emerging around the outside. Which I don't mind, it's fine. Right, right. I'm going to do this square here. I doubt you can see my guidelines anymore but I can just about see them and we don't have to be too precise with them. Having said that I've just come up in completely the wrong place so there we go. Let's come up here. So this time I'm going to work on the diagonal and I'm going to start by putting in some running stitch along that diagonal. Like that. And then 
then I'm going to come down a decent amount, about like that, and go back along the same angle, but maybe a centimetre away from that first row of stitching. Can't wait to get some of these pins out, keep stabbing myself. And these are quite untidy stitches. I'm not going to allow myself to be bothered by it. If you want to draw yourself a bunch of guidelines, I just did one cross right across the centre of the square that I'm working in. And that's plenty for me. I'm trying to be a little bit freer in my old age. So my temptation would be to unpick that, make sure it was all absolutely lined up, but I'm not going to, I'm going to resist the urge. So all we're doing is putting some texture into the sections of the background that are going to be really visible. And we're also quilting our layers together. Now if you wanted to, you could add in a bunch of extra fabrics on the top. So if you wanted to put some patches of different colours in, or different textures or different fabrics that would be absolutely fine as well but trying to make this very different to the other two panels that we've done and we did some sort of overlaid patches we are going to add some fabric on top of this but we did our woven background last time so I wanted this to be very different so it's not painted it's not woven it, we've got something else happening here right so now I've done all my diagonals going in one direction I'm going to go back and work in the opposite direction so I'm going to start down that diagonal to make some crosses. And you can work these however you want to. So whatever seems logical. You could work in lines. I've kind of lost a sense of where my lines are so I'm just going to do my crosses as they happen. I'm not going to worry too much about doing them in a particular order and it might actually make the colours on my thread a little bit more random. Let's go over there. If you wanted to, you could just work each cross separately. So you could do each cross one at a time and just work in kind of rough diagonal rows or verticals. On, I mean, they are going to come out as vertical and horizontal like a grid, but I didn't want them to be too regular. And if when you've put in your opposite diagonals you notice that there are spaces, you can always go back and add in some more crosses. That's totally fine. I quite like how doing it in this haphazard way has meant that I've got different shades on my variegated thread cropping up 
kind of randomly. So you get the idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to put a few more in the gap. I've got a bit of a gap there. I've got a couple of stitches that I haven't finished. So I'm going to fill in those and then we're going to come back and do this section here. So there's my cross stitch section. So I'm now going to work up here and you might be able to just about see. I'm just putting some little circles and what I'm going to do is do little star bursts. So starting at the bottom of my circle, still going to work this kind of in running stitch. And I'm going to try and get two vertical stitches across each circle. So I'm starting at the bottom of the circle, coming kind of to the middle, doing a little catch across and then going back down at the top of the circle. So up at the bottom of the next circle, to the middle, a little catch across the middle and down at the top of the circle. So I'll do this column of circles on camera and I'll do the rest off. So that's put in little pairs of stitches across each of my circles there. So now I'm going to do the same but working horizontally. So I'm going to come up at 3 o'clock and go down just shy of the centre the circle, a little catch across and then go down at nine o'clock. And while I'm on this circle I'm now gonna go let's try and get two more stitches. So I'm doing I'm gonna try and follow hands of a clock or the stations of a clock. So now I'm putting in five o'clock and eleven o'clock like that. And then I'm gonna do one o'clock and seven o'clock that's coming out at eight o'clock but it doesn't matter <laughs> and then I can do seven o'clock and two o'clock there we go so what I've got there is kind of a little starburst. Let me see if I can bring that up a bit closer. There we go. So a little starburst and because of the way I've stitched it, it raises up that centre. So you get a kind of little padded centre in the middle of that starburst. And again, I'm not going to worry too much about how neat it is. I'm just going for it. So I'm going to put in the rest of those and then I'll come back and show you where we're up to. Okay, so we've made a fair amount of progress here. You can see I've got my, that's my top corner with my little starburst and seed stitch and my running stitch and then my crosses. And I've already gone ahead and put some running stitch and seed stitch in the bottom corner down here as well. So what we want to do are just these two squares. So there's a square here if you can't see it and a square here. So I thought we could do some lines of chain stitch. So to do a chain stitch, I've bought my thread through from the back. I'm going to go down the same hole where my thread 
comes out and I'm going to rock forward along the, the line that I'm stitching along making sure my needle comes up inside the loop that I've made and when I pull through that will catch that loop and pull it into a teardrop and it's really important that you don't pull too tight otherwise you'll lose the shape of the stitch so when you make your next stitch they'll be joined into a chain so down where the thread came up rock along the line try and keep them evenly sized make sure your thread is coming up inside the loop and pull through when you get to the bottom you hop over the loop that you've just caught so your needle's going down the other side of it and that puts a little anchor stitch in the bottom to hold your line of chain stitches in place now if you want to you could finish off your thread and come back and start at the top of the next line but I think I'm going to just go back in the other direction so my teardrops will be going in the opposite direction and if you want to you could put a line of running stitch in between I wonder if they're a bit widely spaced so let's Let's add just a little line of running stitch in between my two rows. I'm getting a little bit twitchy because I've used almost a whole skein of thread, it's hard to believe. And I don't want one square to be a different colour <laughs> to all the rest. So I'm getting a little bit twitchy about how much thread I've got left really like that with the running stitch so this is just intuitive stitch and if you wanted to you could just maybe do a little square each day until you've got all of your squares done this doesn't all have to be done in one go it's just quite a nice little bit of stitching to do in front of the TV one evening or if you live somewhere that's warm, maybe in the garden right, I've run out of thread so I'm just going to hop over finish off on the back I'll show you how to restart so to restart I'm going to come up inside that last chain just at the bottom of the chain and then I'm going to loop my thread around, go back down again inside the chain and then rock forward, come up inside the loop and I carry on as if nothing happened and apart from the fact that I'm starting at the wrong end of my thread so my <laughs> the colour's wrong you actually can't tell that you've finished off and restarted a new thread it's a seamless join so down to the bottom hop over and anchor that in place and then I'm going to do my chain stitch next otherwise I'm going to be at the wrong end and my chains won't alternate 
So I'm really trying hard to resist the urge to make my stitching perfect. I am a bit of a perfectionist and I like everything to be super neat but I think this the charm of this block is going to come from the wildness of it. So we've done lots of different techniques already. We're only into our third month but I think this one is going to be quite experimental, a little bit wild and I think that's where it's going to have its magic. So different blocks will have magic because of different techniques and different stylistic choices that we make and this one is going to be fairly riotous I think <laughs> but I think we can there's room for a bit of riotousness so now I'm going to do my running stitches so you get the idea I'm going to finish this block off and then we'll come back and do our final block. Well, it would seem a design decision has been made for me because this is all the thread I have left off that skein. Look, here's my peg 4045 completely empty and I didn't have enough left to add to my last square that I was going to fill in. So that means that when we add our floral spray it is going to be wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So we're going to have a cluster of flowers down here that's going to sort of taper away. I will need to get some more of this because once we've put our flowers in we might want to add a little bit of stitching in the corners and it might be nice to pull some of this green blend into our floral display. So that is our background for this week. So if I bring my aperture in with my spindly bit that's coming off, I'm not too worried that I've got a strip at the top and the bottom because that will be covered by our binding. But that is where we are up to for this week's block. So, make us made a start on our background. We're doing a little bit of a stitch study to add texture and some stitch into our background. And next week we're going to start working on this spray through the middle. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. Can't wait to see your colour schemes and your stitch, slow stitch experiments um, as you build your background for your March block. Do share your versions at hashtag FSH winging it 24 and if you do share on Instagram do tag me in at Feather Stitch House and you can also post in our Facebook group and I'll put details of that in the description below. So have a super week stitching and join me again next Sunday for our second video in our March block and we're going to see what we're going to do in the middle. Happy crafting and I'll see you next week. Bye!